So Nextcloud is a pain in the butt to install. So have we found something better? Let's find out. And a special thank you to all my patrons who without your support, this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about becoming a patron and supporting the channel you love. So what we're going to do today is install FileCloud, which is a Nextcloud alternative. And we'll just see how it works and what some of the limitations are. So first thing we need to do is go to the FileCloud Community Editions website. And you can just Google that. And what you're going to need to do is scroll down and then click on free trial. And then you need to sign up for a free trial because that is how you get a token. So you need a token in order to, uh, to use this. And then also if you look here, if you want to use it for the year, you, it's $10 for year, per year, which goes to charity. And so you might be thinking right now, why pay $10 if I can get Nextcloud for free? Well, let's do the installation and see how hard that is. So next we're going to go to the file cloud Docker page. And on this page, there is some directions. And so we're going to be needing this for the install. What we want to do is make sure we have Open Media Vault installed and we have Docker installed. And in here we're using Portainer. So we're going to copy our IP address there. So it's 192.168.8.137 for me. We're going to open up PuTTY and we're going to put that into PuTTY and then open that and log in as root and your server name. And before we do anything else, we need to first pull the Docker file. And so this one, and so this Docker file is really big and so it will take a while. So we're going to start downloading it and then we're going to do some other things while that's happening. So go back to PuTTY and then just paste in that line there, the Docker pull, and then hit enter. And then that will start downloading it. For me, I already have it downloaded, so it won't take very long. Er, it didn't take any time at all. So next what we want to do, uh, we want to open up a text document. And what we're going to do is copy this line right here. And then paste that into our text document. We're going to put some spaces above here and you'll see why in a second. So we're going to go over to our Open Media Vaults and to our shared folders. And we need the absolute path for our shared folders. And so here you can see it's serve slash dev dash dis uh, by label dash blah, blah, blah. OK. And so we want to type that into our Word documents. Now if we go down to the Docker command here, so we're going to change some things. So where it says your server name, we're going to type in file cloud and get rid of that last arrow there. So now this Docker container will be called file cloud. So it's going to be restart always. And so here, this is our database. And so what we're going to do is up here, we're going to put slash file cloud. And so we are going to be storing all of our information down here in this file on our server. So what we're going to do is replace where it says data there with this information here. So we're going to copy that, paste that in there. Now if we go down to the next one, here's our next, this is our next file. And this is where our information or our data is going to be stored. And so again, we're going to copy this. And we're going to paste that right there. And then put a slash in after file cloud right here. So that's where our data files will be. Then our finally, final one is uh, our SOLR server information. And so again, we copy this. And paste that in there. Our, now our file cloud 
is ready to be installed. And so what we're going to do is just copy this information and then paste it into PuTTY. So copy this. Go back to PuTTY, just paste that, and then hit Enter. And here you can see we got a error, and I'll show you why. So if we go back to our document here, you can see right here our ports. And so on Open Media Vault, so Open Media Vault uses port 80, so we're going to have to change that to 82. And again, we're going to copy this, paste that back into PuTTY, then hit enter. And here, what happened is because we already started that, we have to go back to Portainer, refresh that page, get rid of the broken container that it created, click remove, and any persistent data. Okay, now let's try one more time. Copy that information in there, hit enter. And now the container is started. Now if we go to container, hit refresh again. There is our file cloud server, or file cloud yeah, server. And here you can see it's on port 82. Okay, so what we're going to do is copy the IP address. Go to a new browser window. Hit backspace colon 82. So if we go back to the Docker information, we can see that to access as the admin, we need to go to this address. And then as a user, we need to go to that address. And so what we're going to do is copy this information right here. And we're going to paste that onto the end of our IP address there. Hit enter. And now we're at a login page. So if we go back to the Docker information, the login is admin, the password is password. And then hit enter to log in. And so here it's we see two different things. So in the main page, welcome page here, we can find the admin guide, which I suggest going to. So just click on that. That will open up a new page with different tabs to go to anything you want to know. And then otherwise, you can just get rid of this, not very important. And so next you want to install the license. And so in the first page we were on, you got, you logged into, you have to log into File Cloud in order to get the license. And so how you would do that is click Install License once you've downloaded it. Choose your file, click on License, Open, and then Apply. and and close and so now our license is implied and so right now we're gonna skip all these but these are different things you can do to get yourself set up let's just take a look at the general UI here so this dashboard will show you what is happening in your file cloud server where we're gonna start off is over on to the side here where it says users groups and admins click on users and then go over to add user Click on Add User, and we're going to add a user. So we'll call this user TDL, and then we'll add in a password. Uh, just make sure you spell your password right, because there's no way of seeing it, and you don't do it twice. And then an email address. And then click Create. And so there we've added a user. And so, so you're going to need a separate user to log into File Cloud from outside of your uh, server. And so basically, so you can sync data from your desktop or access data from your phone. So now we've created a user. So uh, you can add in other folders, do different permissions. And eventually, when we log in, there'll be a device here. What we want to do now is go down to settings. So what we're going to do now is add in the address so we can access our server from outside of our local network. Uh, so for this demonstration, we're going to do DuckDNS. And so go to DuckDNS, log in, and create a name. We're on the settings page and managing our settings on the server. We're going to put that name here in the address bar. And then we're going to click Check URL. And so it says the server URL is valid. So let's click Close. And we're going to save that. Now to actually 
access the file cloud server, we need to forward port 80, because we use, just used HTTP here, uh, to port 82, which is our file cloud server. So go to your router, go to the port forwarding section. And so what we need to do here is put the IP address of our server. And then we're going to route 82, which is our internal port for our file cloud, to 80 on the X on the outside. And we're going to use both protocols and we're gonna click new, and then scroll down and click save. If you don't do this and you try to use one of the web apps, uh, it, you cannot access your server. So next what we're going to do is copy our IP address again, plus the colon 82. Put that in another web window, paste it, and then enter. So this will take us to the user login page. And so now we can log in as a user. So my user was TDL and I've typed in my password, login. And so now we're on the login page for a user on FileCloud. So here what we wanna do is download the mobile app for our phone or our tablet that we are going to use, and also download the desktop version. So FileCloud does have Office and Outlook add-ins, so if you use either one of those, you can download those here too. Once you've done those two things, click Done. And now we have access to file cloud. And so right now there's no files here. Now if you get to this page and you haven't installed the apps yet, there is a way to get to them. So click on your username, which is over here in the top right corner. And then you scroll down and you can click install desktop apps. And then click whatever you want. For me, it would be file sync for Windows and then that will download. Okay, so next it's getting warm, so we're gonna take off our jackets. And so now we've started up File Cloud and we're on the setup. And so what do these two things think? So Windows Explorer integration means there'll be a tab here on the left in our uh, File Explorer. And then Doc IQ Office integration means that you can integrate uh, Microsoft Office into uh, File Cloud. Hit Next, and then Install, and then click Yes, Restart the Computer, and then Finish. Okay, so our machine has rebooted, and let's go back to the desktop. And so here you can see now we have the File Cloud Sync sign-in. And so what we're going to do is, for us, this is HTTP, no S there. And then we're going to type in filecloud.ducknes.org. So that is my IP address or my uh, name. So you have to put in the name that you actually picked out on DuckDNS. Next, we type in our account name and our password. And down here, you can have document editing only. We're going to leave it in English, then log in. Now if we click down here, you can see it's syncing, and we can actually open up our website. And so now we have our file cloud share opened up on our web browser. And if we go over to our desktop, there is a shortcut. There is a shortcut to our file cloud file, which is in our documents folder. So it's documents file cloud. Okay, so now we have it working on two things. And so let's actually put some stuff in there. So let's go to videos. Well, first let's open up our document. Let's go to videos and let's copy something and move it in there. So we're going to move this video into my files and then let's move some music there. So let's music, move some music into there. So same thing, we're gonna grab that and drop that into My Files. Okay, if we close that, go to My Files here, we can see it's there. And let's check the desktop app. And we open up the desktop app and there we have our intro and our old RV song. So let's try those out in File Cloud. So, if we click, right click and click play. 
that plays the introduction. And let's click, right click and click play old RV. And that clicks the old RV song. And now because we played those, those two are in our recent files and they're up above in activities. So one thing about video files and file cloud is that for file cloud, uh, it only plays MP4 video files. So if you have any other types of files, you have to convert those before you put them on file cloud. The other thing is that you want to add all your files through the file sync or the file folder on your desktop, which you have now. And the reason why that is, is because it automatically updates from that file. Whereas if you try an external connect, you can connect file cloud to an external file or share, but then you have to manually or set a script to uh, automatically review that file to make sure it updates in file cloud. So I would suggest using the desktop app more than anything else. So now let's take a look on our device. Okay, so first thing you need to do is download the official file cloud app and then open that up. And then when you do, you get to this window and it's not so obvious what you need to do next. And so you press on the plus up above and for us, we don't have that S, so we're going to get rid of the S there. And then we're going to type in our server name and then our username and password. And then once we're done with that, you click Save. And then you tap on your server name. And then that is how you access your files. And once in here, you can see I'll press on Files. And there's our intro and our old RV server. So going back to the beginning of this video, comparing file cloud to next cloud, uh, I just looked at my videos and using file cloud takes about an hour or less time to set up just doing it the normal next cloud way. And file cloud compared to next cloud Pi, which is the much faster way of installing next cloud, still took seven minutes less. So if you want a fast, ins fast install, uh, then file cloud is for you. Just remember there's a limitations for uh, file types for videos. Now back to the video. Now if you want to learn more about OpenV Vault, click this playlist up here. Otherwise, have a great day. Make sure you like and subscribe before you go, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.